feeling. I don't think anything really can kind of compare to it. There was no pain. At no time, in any way, shape, or form, is anybody uh, forced, coerced, drugs, uh, ropes, whatever. Uh, there's no bondage or anything like that involved in any of this because these are um, these are your friends. I had. Uh, submitted a um, um, query regarding a, another role uh, which I didn't get and uh, after that I forgot all about it and then about two months later I received an email uh, letting me know that the director had uh, saved m my pictures that I had submitted and was interested in meeting with me for the role of cop number one for a movie. And that's all I knew. <laughs> I met with Rob the next day and uh, I was frantically looking for a place to park. <laughs> and I was, I was becoming later and later and I was stressed out. And finally, I just parked in a... Um, a loading zone and I ran down to, the, to where I was supposed to meet Rob and, and just let him know. <laughs> and he said, well, um, <clears throat> just go back to your car and I'll meet you over there. So I went over there and stood by my car and we started chatting about, um, about the movie. And at that time, he told me what the movie was about. And, and you know, I was, it didn't phase me because I have, um, I've seen the best of humanity and I've also seen uh, the darkest parts of humanity. The summer prior to this incident, I was in a softball tournament in Enumclaw and I had uh, a guy on the opposing team injured himself in the outfield and I actually helped him onto the stretcher that took him to the very same hospital where this man died. And, you know, that hits kind of close to home. The cold, harsh, brutal reality is a man bled to death, okay? And as I researched my role and revisited some articles that I had read a, a year prior, but also some new you know, information, you know, I, I thought about, I thought about what was going through this man's mind as he was bleeding to death. And how did he find himself in this place at this time? And, uh, you know, I had the experience of holding a corpse in my hands that was a few minutes before a seven-year-old boy that had drowned in the in a swimming pool and his last breath was uh, frozen in time on his face and his, his eyes were fixed and I could see right down into his mouth and it was ghostly white and it, um, you know, at that moment when I was staring into those empty eyes and looking into the depths of death, all I saw was my own reflection. And to be there at that moment in time uh, during that tragedy for a little boy that um, could not be revived and ended up dying on Mother's Day, uh, you know, that that's embossed in my heart and and it's it when someone dies it's it's something that i i take to heart because it, there's nothing trivial about it there's people that um that love that individual and they will never see them again and 
That's a tragedy. We knew it was going to happen, but we didn't know when. this thing so far out of proportion, it's unreal. How many places do you know of that actually gets CNN news to come down and fly a helicopter over the property just so they can have some footage for a accidental death? One day I'm doing just fine, and the next day I'm an evil person. There's nothing evil about me. I wasn't breaking the law. I had everything going for me, and it all come crashing down around me. ...of animal cruelty after a bizarre death in King County. According to the Sheriff's Department, the man died from internal bleeding after allegedly having sex with a horse in Enumclaw. According to the King County Sheriff's Office, the farm itself may be a gathering point to have sex with livestock and domestic animals. Authorities were able to find the farm after the man was dropped off at a local hospital. Surveillance cameras traced the vehicle used back to the farm. Deputies say they are investigating the possibility that animal cruelty laws might apply. We had buckets full of tapes and CDs and stuff. I wanted to get this stuff out of the house. I was scared. We did notice a very definite change in the phone service. Picking up the phone, every 15 seconds, there would be a little blank spot. Nobody at either end could hear it. And then we'd come back to normal again, every 15 seconds. And that went on for quite a few days. religious tracks. People who were trying to save our souls. Hello, Dad! Hello, son! <laughs> hey, Dad, you know what? They, they, they need to get this guy's name out there. What's, what's the guy thinking? Screwing a horse. <laughs> Find out. <laughs> well, nobody finds out if you live. To the remaining items in our news digest today people who have this from olympia washington people who have sex with animals should face felony convictions for animal cruelty says a republican senator pushing for a ban on bestiality these animals don't have the cognitive ability to consent and that is the case then we have to be protecting them said pam roach really now i hate to express my naivete about these kinds of things but well, no i don't actually i'm very proud to be naive about these kinds of things, but how do they know the horse didn't consent? How in the world can this happen without consent? We're talking... We're, 
We were talking about a human being and a horse. It, 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 uh, if the horse didn't consent, then none of this would have happened. They're looking for a spark to get a shitstorm started. And this provided that spark. He said, stop right where you're at, uh, put your hands behind you, uh, you're being arrested for homicide. And I said, what? I am? No, I can't tell you anymore. You gotta come with me. <laughs> 